Whether you are a student studying for a new exam or a professional learning a new course, improving your memory is a skill that you will find useful. I am Dr. Sid Warrior and welcome to my channel. Here I will help you get to know your own brain better. Number one is the Pomodoro technique. Now what is the Pomodoro technique? It is a way of entraining your brain to be more conscious of the passage of time. So we use intervals of 20 minutes where you pay attention to one particular task, have an alarm that goes off every 20 minutes take a break for five minutes and then restart your work. By dividing our available time into smaller pockets of 20 minutes, we find that we are able to pay more attention in each pocket. And this translates into you learning your subject better. Number two is retention. When you are learning something new, imagine that your brain is a house and the doors and the windows are the ones that will let information in. If you keep your doors open for long enough, that is when you are paying attention and you're letting information come in. Registering it is allowing that information to find a space to sit. But retaining that information means finding a space in your house to keep that information. And that is why organizing it is so important. The way we retain information is according to the sense in which we have perceived it. Is it something visual? Is it something audible? Is it something tactile or something that we tasted or smelt? It helps to hack into that. Right now you're listening to me talk, but is all the information that I'm saying registering in your brain? One way to ensure registration is to jot down or write down the thoughts that you are having while listening to me. Using 3D models that you can touch and actually explore can give you a whole different dimension to remember things by. And that brings me to my third point, audio feedback. When we repeat something again and again, we are creating an audio feedback loop, which is why a lot of children are taught this way by asking them to repeat something. Which is why nursery rhymes and songs are so easy to remember because they have an inherent pattern, a rhythm that you can now sing or hum. Point number four would bring me to create a memory palace or a mind map. Imagine a place that you're very familiar with, could be your own bedroom. The way to create a memory palace is to start associating different parts of that room with different facets of information that you want to remember. And the more detailed the memory palace is, the more information they can attach to different parts. So that when you are asked to remember a particular aspect of a particular piece of information, you can simply go to that part of your memory palace. Simply thinking about that will trigger all that information. There are different ways of constructing a memory palace. Each of us would probably create something unique. And it is actually a very interesting experiment to see how your memory palace would look and feel like. Point number five would be rewire with other networks. If you learn something new, it doesn't mean that that is the only thing you should learn at that time. Everything new is connected with other things. So sometimes learning those other things can help you remember the first thing better. Now we are talking about recall. How do you bring back information that you've already remembered, which is an equally important part of memory. And this is where self quizzing comes in. Whatever it is that you've learned, try to create some questions that you can then ask yourself later. And you'll find that preparing those questions itself makes you see that topic differently. And that helps you remember. Teach others. Richard Feynman famously said that if you have to learn something well, you have to learn to teach it. And that is absolutely spot on. When you're teaching something that you have learned to someone else, you are taking everything that you know rearranging it in a way that makes it easy for the other person to understand and in that process you yourself understand it better and this brings me to the last two things you have to do to improve your memory and that is where sleep comes in when you sleep a lot of things that you've learned in the day get consolidated into long-term memory sleep is also very important for creative ideas and finding new ways of looking at something which is also how you learn and finally the last thing that you need to do to improve memory is to exercise. Exercise leads to an increase in a molecule called BDNF, which is brain derived neurotropic factor. And many recent studies have proved how important BDNF is in improving your memory. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone. Take care.